Hey guys, it's a boy. Today with another crazy card trick. Today I'm going to show you guys two very, very easy glimpses that you could do in your own home with a deck of playing cards. Now the title of this video isn't clickbait. They're very easy to do. And one even works as a control. Man, you guys are really getting it all when you're subscribed to Piggy. You get the nice little, look at the, look at the bouquet. Look at the, people like bouquet. Look at that shit. Damn, son. And uh, so you should subscribe and check out the Academy. Uh, we're, we're sponsored by the Academy. That's right. I have to sponsor my own fucking videos. So make sure to click in the link below and check out the Card Academy uh, for more information there. So uh, let's just get right into it. Let's just jump right into it. Um, for these, uh, you're going to get a glimpse. Now, glimpse is a secret technique in obtaining the identity of of a playing card so what that means is that you are getting a card that you want to know and you're knowing it that that's what it is so that's what a, a glimpse is so in this case i'm going to show you guys two very easy glimpses to do uh one for the top card and one for a selected card from the middle of the deck so for one of these you're going to need to have previously controlled the card to the top or you need to know the identity of the top card for a key card trick or whatever so that first one looks a little bit like this that's it. That's how it looks like. See, I'll do it again. See, easy. Seven clubs, right? And if you get good at it, you could actually tell the, uh, the cards that are next to the seven. So seven, eight, queen, right? That's if you get really good at it. So this is known as the dribble peak. Uh, I don't want to say that it's independently created by me, but I, I, yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Uh, because it's just something that I've done. I really haven't seen anywhere else. So really, it's it's nothing. It's you're dribbling. So you're dribbling the cards, and uh, in the dribble, you're always gonna notice what the top card is. But it just looks like such a natural action. Oh, so you picked any one of these cards, sir, and then you're able to peek at the card. So one more time, you're just dribbling, and that seven of clubs, which is the last card, is just naturally gonna fall, just by itself, allowing you to peek at the card. And again, if you get good at it. You could dribble the cards and you could note what the top three cards are. So in one dribble, you could peek at the top three cards of the deck, know their identity, and you could uh, perform whatever trick you want. So imagine the spectators just shuffle the deck, right? They've, uh, they've gotten their dirty little fingers all over the cards. You take the deck back. All you got to do is say, hey, you mixed the cards up pretty well. You know, the identity of the top card or maybe even a top three card once you get good at this. So just some tips on this. You don't want to linger too much. Uh, it should just look like a normal dribble. You don't want to get into the habit of just holding this back card and then letting it fall because you missed the dribble. If you miss it, you could just dribble again. So don't be worried about having to hold this card back as if it's uh, some sort of uh, special child that, that needs to be held back from the first grade. Uh, right, mom? So you're just dribbling the cards and uh, naturally you're getting that peak on that card. So that's, uh, that's a very easy dribble peek. I hope you guys uh, use it wisely. Leave in the comments below if your mom also put you in the first grade uh, when you were supposed to be in the second grade. So, whoa, look at that vlogger transition. Oh boy, you guys are really getting some quality in this channel. Look at that qu quality. That's going to be the thumbnail. Actually, yeah, let me take a picture of that. Yeah, that's the thumbnail. Got him. Uh, so this next one, I'm not going to name because it's going to be obvious based on the action. So for this one, you could even do it from uh, an actual control. So you could use it as a control here. So that card is squared up with the deck. And guess what? In one smooth action, you're able to not only control the card, but you're also able to glimpse at the card. So I know that the card's on top and I know the card is a seven of hearts. So this is a riffle shuffle control. First time I saw this was in Daryl Martinez's encyclopedia of card slides. However, it's been notable done since uh, pretty much expert at the card table, uh, just a standard riffle shuffle control. You're not really doing anything fancy. However, you are controlling a card and glimpsing at it in one smooth, continuous action. So the way that is done, you have a card picked, uh, try to uh, try to conspire to make it the same card. When you square up the deck, you obtain a pinky break right there. One of you guys was saying, hey, uh, we don't need a thousand close-ups of the pinky break. Well, guess what? There's one more, bitch. So here, uh, you got a pinky break there, and you're ready to go. So all that needs to happen 
is that you're going to transfer the deck to the right hand briefly, right? As to not ascertain or show the fact that you have a break there. You're going to riffle up to your break, break the deck at that point. So notice right now I have a break above the seven of hearts. I'm transferring the deck to my right hand. I'm riffling to the break, breaking the deck at that point. And now I could do a standard riffle shuffle, making sure that the left-handed card is the one that falls last because that's going to allow me to peek at the corner of the card here. So if I'm just looking at the corner and I hold it back, I could just peek at the corner as that card falls and continue the riffle shuffle. Another point that's important is to not linger on the card. So you just want to make it a natural move, right? You want to make it a natural move. You don't want to linger with the card. You don't want one of these actions. You don't want one of those because then it becomes a little bit obvious. So for this, you just need a casual glimpse. You just need uh, for the card to fall down. And guess what? If you can't peek at it while you're doing the riffle shuffle, you could always just go back to the dribble. Oh boy, see, so you're gonna be able to peek at it no matter what. So in this action, you've not only been able to glimpse at the spectator's card, you also were able to control it to the top without them uh, knowing any better. So it's a very easy glimpse. Let's just do that one more time. You get a pinky break right above their card, right? Now you riffle to that. That's your glimpse. That's your control. And you have a one hot unit of um, measurement there. So that's, uh, that's two easy glimpses you guys could do with any deck of cards. One is a control. So I hope you guys learned that and I hope you guys use those because they're very easy to do, but they also are very satisfying uh, to know the identity of certain cards. My best advice, don't linger. Don't be afraid to miss the card because you're always gonna have another opportunity to glimpse at it. So if you miss this one, don't worry about it. You're gonna be able to do this one, right? If you miss this one, guess what? You'll be able to do it again, that's fine. Uh, one thing that you don't wanna fall into though is, is doing this a lot because then it becomes, uh, wait, why does he keep doing that? Uh, if you can't get it by the second time, then quit magic, honestly. Uh, you don't belong here, so. Uh, go get a life, get a, a, a woman. Um, those are all the things that'll come to you once you leave uh, this craft. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure to do all the things that people do when it comes to videos. I'm going to go figure out different ways to use a Ghost in a Jar Funko as a super pository. We'll do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah.